of the second Knowledge Seekers workshop. And we have the Knowledge Seekers from the Spaceship Institute online with us here. And Mr. Kesh as well. He's another Knowledge Seeker. And uh, tonight's uh, main topic is going to be on the spacecraft and spacecraft construction. Okay, so we'll get into it uh, right away here in terms of, I think, um, we'll, we'll see what the knowledge seekers would like to say initially. And then I know there's uh, questions from various people on technical things and uh, whatnot as we go along here. But I'll hand it over now to uh, the knowledge seekers of the Spaceship Institute. Hello and good morning to all. Um, we have a nice day today in uh, Italy. And uh, we will try to talk about uh, spaceship uh, uh, in this workshop. Um, we've got uh, some uh, drawings, uh, some uh, plans of spaceship uh, craft. Uh, this, uh, these drawings were made in uh, 2012. And uh, uh, talking talks have, have been started to, to start building this, uh, this craft. Uh, a few days ago, there were talks with some Italian companies which are able to, to help with the construction of the craft. Um, so, um, actually, it was already last week then that uh, what was announced on the radio show that uh, uh, foundation is uh, has started to to raise funds uh, for the construction of the spaceship. Um, we also. We are also um, announced that uh, in May or June we accept uh, the second uh, second generation of knowledge seekers uh, who can help us with the uh, building of the spaceship. We need people with uh, um, design capabilities with uh, knowledge of uh, gas control, um, computer programmers, and other profiles. So this is for, for start from me. I will give a uh, microphone to other knowledge seekers. So buckle up. <laughs> so quick question. Do these guys for May need to pay 20,000? Yes. The fee is still stays the same. Ah, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. You guys have any questions that I can answer? In your schedule uh, for the spaceship, mm -hmm. are you planning to have the functional one for 500 people at the end of this year or just a um, prototype at the end of this year? Yes, functional one. At the, by the end of this year? Definitely. That is the target. But, um, the, uh, the construction, the construction is very simple. We're going to load it up today. In the next few minutes, um, Manak will load it up. As you can see, this is, uh, this is the design which is on the USB key to the government. 
This is another release from what people have been asking us to release, what's been given to the government. So, what you see, the documents are signed and issued, which means that the certified qualified papers, which been given in the US speaking in the last uh, last times to the to the governments. Uh, we will make a very important and radical news about the USB next Thursday. If there is anybody who's listening, who's ever been following the Cash Foundation for past how many years, it's important for you to listen to the next Thursday, the 20th of March, the Knowledge Seekers. Uh, they, we cannot disclose anything at the moment, there are some things need to be moved up to the right way, but uh, we'll announce it next Thursday, and as I said before, it's part of this uh, session to Rick regarding next week. Next session, next Thursday, will be the most important session we have ever held by the Cash Foundation. I think when, when we release the information, it will be apparent to people why. But uh, hopefully the table of eight will be full next week. Uh, that as a as a knowledge seekers panel we can announce it together. Uh, those who understand how the structure of the Cash Foundation Space Institute run is that we have brought in eight members of world public who become knowledge seekers and the decisions for the foundation from now on sits with the eight panel eight members of the panel around this table. So we should have eight uh, next week. This week, one is in, uh, two are in Belgium. One uh, is in, still in Africa, he hasn't arrived yet. And one, uh, our Japanese colleague will arrive later on this morning. And uh, the whole of the spaceship technology will be released in the next few minutes. You can download the pictures, you can look at the pictures. We have brought in uh, uh, the people who produce aircrafts or are involved in the space program, not the space program, but the aircraft industry to assist us with their knowledge for building of the system. As Marco told you earlier, they were here part of the organization this week. Uh, and uh, We'll, the meetings with them will follow the same. Uh, the same usual way, the design and the full development will be gifted to the Italian nation as their companies are producing it. So, in uh, moving to Italy, whatever we develop here as a system of destination at the moment, all our work is given to the nation directly. So, the spacecraft will not be built by the Foundation, by the Space Institute, will be done by the Space Institute panel and the other scientists who join us, but will be manufactured and produced by the Italian space program, or what they call aircraft industry. This is where we are at the moment, unless the position changes. And uh, the way we gave the power generator to the Italian manufacturers, they are working on it to produce their way. Uh, I heard uh, this week that they start. They even modified again this week. There's their their systems that they brought in new parts for their system. So once we receive the what do you call it the pre-manufacturing unit from them, we will announce it. They know that the technology is free to the world, so they're developing it for the rest of us. The same way the spaceship craft will be manufactured by the Italians for the rest of the world. But there is a big problem, or other problem, uh, these kind of needs needs to be financed. And up to now, Cash Foundation, and through all my efforts for the past 10, 20 years, I have financed all the things to go with the Foundation. From 
from now with the spacecraft, it's got to be world population. The people who want to fly, the people who want to see the technology to be developed for ahead, you need to put effort into it and uh, what do you call it, contribute towards the development. And millions has been spent up to now to develop different aspects. And uh, now, uh, if if we want to keep the production of this craft out of the hand of the governments to control and be with the world population, maybe I'm doing with the Italians, it needs all the people to contribute towards it. You want the benefit of it, you have to put something in it. The foundation has estimated about 50 to 55 million initial cost, and the uh, Italian company will cover their part of the VC, our part of about that amount. And we need to raise about one to two million a week to meet this demand. There's no use saying you build the craft, when it will be built, is from now on what we put in it. You have to find a way to finance this because this budget uh, at this rate is beyond the capability of the foundation. Unless a millionaire gives us 100 million and says, okay, you can build it. So then they dictate what we have to do. They say what we, we can do. We done it in the small bits, we financed it over years. But now to produce such a craft at a minimum cost of about 50 million, uh, it needs a uh, world population support. Those who've been waiting to fly and hoping they'll do it for us the way everybody start to wait for the energy and then start for the materials. We are giving everything we're developing freely out, but the spaceship is a costly matter, not only scientifically, it's producing materials. You're talking about the craft around about 40 to 55 meter diameter. You're talking about the construction of about three to four floors high. You're talking about auxiliary tanks, about 500 seats. And uh, everything else which goes with the program, I guess. We don't have a black box, uh, what do you call it, financing the way it's available to government. As we said, this is the technology for the people, by the people. And now there is a panel here who control and looking to all the developments. And the next 25 will be actually a hand-on team, will be involved on a daily basis once they taught with the, with the construction and the rest of it. That's why we're bringing them in. So uh, we're talking about a huge construction business, the site we have, we, we have, the, hopefully by early, by next week, the agreements will be finalized in some ways for different aspects of it. Uh, but uh, this is not, if you're waiting to be on a spaceship or be seeing a spaceship flying at this size, uh, uh, it will not happen unless we receive enough financial support to be able to buy the parts. This is all some nuts and panels and screws and chairs. Uh, so from now on, this is what I said, this has become collective job and we will we will explain more in the next week in session. The, the reactor has a base, or I should say the spacecraft has a base. Has it been loaded yet? This is loaded on Spaceship Institute Facebook. We have uploaded Spaceship Institute uh, design to Spaceship Institute Facebook site. I will put the link to the chat. So you can see the design now is available. Uh, the, the craft has five levels. Uh, you have a level minus two or the below level where the three uh, control operational reactor seat. You have minus one level, which is above. This is where the mother reactor sits. Mother reactor, if you look at the design number two level, you see that uh, um, what we call the universal configuration for flight is uh, followed. 
center reactor in the middle on the minus one floor, uh, three control reactors on minus two level. Then this allows us directional and vertical and submergence with a full shield uh, capabilities. Uh, at the same time, you have the uh, auxiliary tanks, all the materials which is needed. These tanks will initially be loaded if we need to, but these are for extraction of the material in the space. So you forever have a continuous supply of materials which are needed by like water, oxygen, and the rest of the materials in, 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 in a, a daily need. Um, these tanks are not, as you see, that they are limited. It's unlimited resources now that we start the conversion technology. And uh, so once initially they are filled, in a space, they'll be renewed directly. These make us totally independent of uh, re need to return to Earth to add up, or top up, or load up. So, the, as you see, they are connected in the in the design minus one. They are connected to the central reactor. Uh, connection because you make your materials like water and hydrogen and oxygen and all other materials directly in conjunction with the magnetic fields of the reactors. Interaction of the both magnetic gravitational field between the four reactors. Yesterday uh, in our normal teaching lessons uh, we started understanding the operation of how producing material and how materials can be produced show with the show of a, what do you call it, the solid magnets, because you get the same effect in the plasma magnets. Uh, I think somebody will tell you what they learned yesterday, how to make something which has no more value anymore. Who wants to be the spokesman? Okay. The speaker. There we are. We got we got Marek. He'll explain to you what you all love to have and you thought is impossible. We we've been taught how to make something with all of you, and has been the cause of the problem for mankind for centuries. There we are. Marek is here. Okay. So if you want to make some gold. Uh, there is a way you can use reactor technology to produce whatever you need. It's, it is to be used in the spaceship. And uh, let's say to make some gold, we can use initially mercury and Dope it with uh, neutrons inside the reactor so that uh, it creates instability and uh, transforms the mercury into the gold. And release, uh, meanwhile, it releases uh, helium and uh, this can continue to continuously change the mercury to gold uh, while keeping uh, required conditions in the reactor so that the fields allow the mercury to be diluted in a way it can be transformed. We still need to experience it ourselves, but we are close in this understanding to the process. Any questions? <laughs> Where do you place the mercury inside the reactor? 
you don't need to place the mercury inside the reactor. You can keep the mercury outside. You, um, by introduction of additional neutron, you unstable uh, the, the mercury. It's very hard to extract a proton, an electron, and a neutron for, from mercury. But it's very easy to introduce it, unstable it. And um, you can produce at the same time. Yesterday we saw how a reactor can be used to produce on one side in interaction between two of the reactors water, while the other reactors is producing gold and the other reactor is producing um, like protein. Uh, we are running an experiment in conversion of gases into matter which is uh, one stage is already running for 24 hours, running for 48 hours now, hours today. For 48 hours yeah, hours. and uh, in that process, I think we'll leave it to uh, Armand to tell you what we saw on top of the water in one of the systems. Actually, we made a video, and uh, you know, we're gonna re we we made a video, and uh, we're gonna release it on and uh, pictures, and you can see that we created galaxies, and each galaxies, you know, cloudy. each galaxies, uh, uh, there's a matter been producing, and uh, we saw fat, which one of the actually containers we saw fat, and it clearly shows that. But not every each container it's changing the color different. So uh, actually we're gonna wait another two, three days and we're gonna have another video that we can show you the change. We created actually new life. We started with new life. And it's amazing. <laughs> it's so simple and it's amazing. Change of magnetic field, you know. It's a, it's a, it's a uh, totally different understanding. Because when we break out from the matter level, we can understand that the fields control everything. You change the fields, and it's going to be changed. Environment is very important. It affects. And you can see if the small reactor we call reactor because it is a reactor, but for you, you're going to look at it, it's a can. But it's a whole life is starting over there, just simply, you know, putting one material, which has its own magnetic field in the gravitation range. When I say magnetic, gravitation comes with it. <laughs> So guys, it's 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 a very very deep changing everybody's knowledge about what we learned at schools. It's totally different, and it's gonna be different, and it's fun to create. <laughs> so loosen up, everything is good. We have a funny moment when. When we try to switch on this experiment, we are recording to share with all of you. And in the moment we try to switch on, while we are recording, the, the experiment don't make nothing, doesn't work at all. So we have a lot of laugh in this moment. And we try to replanate the experiment and uh, think about what was the problem uh, here is uh, we are learning now so this is part of the process of learning you don't get your goals instant and instantly so you have to learn about your failures also Um, if we if we go a little bit into details of this experiment, 
Um, I will try to describe a little bit of of this experiment. Um, what actually is going on um, with my understanding at the moment? Uh, we we are trying to replicate the environment um, or conditions which are happening in our body. Um, Actually, we created uh, we created different containers, and we put in these containers uh, um, two different electrodes: one coated with uh, nanomaterial, and one electrode is uh, a single just uh, just the metal we used uh, copper but we can use also other uh, metals and we put in this container also uh, salt solution salt solution is used also in salt different salts is are used also in our body if we go to the health section and uh, People who are familiar with uh, homeopathy, they they can tell us uh, more about salts, uh, yeah. about salts are conversion system from energy to matter, and this 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 uh, procedure happens all the time in our body. We have lymph, which is supply of energy. And in different parts of our body, where different salt sits, this energy from lymph converts to, to, to matter. But not in, ma in matter as we know, uh, it is Gans state of matter. Uh, we know that uh, our, our cells in body are in gun state. Yeah, all the components, uh, if you look, the amino acids, we have oxygen, we have nitrogen, we have carbon, we have hydrogen. So, all together, if you look, we if we put them together, we get 43 number, which is common denominator in in our planet. This is the the strength of of the field in our in our planet. That's why amino acid holds together. And that's the universal flow of protein. Using these amino acids, you can build all the proteins in the human body. Uh, besides all the cellular structures. Um, maybe we can give uh, give microphone to other people. Uh, in our in our call that we that they can correct us elia please you're a medical person so i would like to to hear your your opinion about what you say for amino acid it's uh, some kind of uh, how to say people will be not understand what you want to explain to them about the matter and gun state in the way how you said, because uh, you, you have to say that uh, our body is made it from different ki different kind of gas state of gas state of gases like a carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, and this different kind of gas state of gases when they mix it to each other 
Finally, they made different kind of matters, how the Mr. Keshe said. Depends of level of um, existence of different gun state of these gases, we have it finally different kind of tissue, like a muscles, like a liver, like a gallbladder, heart, whatever. And when the different gun state of gases mix it, depends of the of them density, they represent in meta world in different density. This is the different what you have to say because uh, lymph, uh, blood, and different organs, all of them they are matters, but they have different density. You understand and different explanation of matter because the lymph and blood they are liquid but they also are matter and uh, liver and heart and different internal or organs they are more solid but they are also a, a matter so it depends how the gun state of gases will be mixed what you call the salts that is the clue for representing the gun state in meta world. I understand in that way. If I'm wrong, you are able to correct me. Everybody is right their own way, Elia. Yeah, I'm listening. We love to uh, make this knowledge seekers workshop in a different way of Mr. Kesh. We like to uh, make more dynamic because uh, we are now learning and we want to learn from you. So uh, we are at the point that uh, I have to uh, format all my biology and physiology uh, knowledge to could replace uh, for the new one. So that's very atonish for the people uh, to we have to build a new science in biology physics chemics so we need to build together that's the reason uh, why uh, we prefer to discuss with all of you all these topics because uh, now we are starting to understand in very different way so the most important part for me is to be able to delete all your previous knowledge in order to be able to understand the new ones. It's painful for a moment, but it's so <laughs> different <laughs> feeling you're going to feel. OK, so what is the right explanation then? Right explanation about guns? Yeah, because about what we're speaking about the matter and the gun state in, in the human body and how the gun state of the gases makes the matter. If I'm wrong, it's all what about I'm fields. It's, all, it's all about the fields. Salts, they are settlers. Yeah, that I'm saying. So this is the every, mix. Every salt, every salt is, you know, settles certain matter. Yes. So if you create that magnetic and gravitational field. Yes. That's the matter you're going to get. Yeah, I'm correct. But this is depend which kind of gases you mix it in, in, in what quality. Okay. In that no, hand, you, no, you no, receive no, no. different kind of matter. No. no. We have to understand one thing, all the matters are same. If we, um, what is matter? Actually, matter is when, when magnetic gravitational fields uh, are lose some of their strength. And when they come to the strength of the matter, then we, we observe them as matter. In experiment that we are running right now, we, we have put salt, so salty water in our containers. 
So we have this this salt condition and and uh, the salt create the condition that uh, make possible to change the fields into another state of matter that we call GANS. GANS is a very special state of matter unknown for the science in this moment and uh, it's like uh, circles. It's like circles. It's, it's it's like spheres. millions of spheres, you know, you know, sliding each other. It's very, 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 very small scale. <laughs> so the fields of the matter are covering the internal structure of other energies. So they become uh, totally protect from the other energies. That's the reason, and you will see in a video that you can burn uh, GANs and you can touch in sec in seconds and you don't burn so okay. the pressure or the heat or other energies don't affect the guns because yeah. only are, are dependent of the inner uh, gravitational fields of the matter that is yes. covering the yeah. whole structure so yes. they behave like superconductors and yeah. as I can see now, all the chemical reactions of uh, uh, metabolism occurs in this state. For me, it's uh, so overwhelming in this moment that I can explain better. Okay, but the question is, how this gun state of gases, they are mixed and made different kind of tissues in the human body? And you try to... Uh, explain on the beginning that how amino acid, how in them gun state, they stick to each other and finally made a matter. So the My question is... The magnetic field. Yeah, all depends on the magnetic force of each other. It's like a binding in a chemical way doesn't exist. Like that we okay, understand. That's okay. That's okay. But we have different kind of solid matter. We have a liquid state like a blood and lymph, and we have a solid state also. How the nature understand which one and how to combine the gun state of gases to make different solid matters, liquid or more solid? That is the question. Because the we are question, it depends on the environment, the forces in the environment, and uh, the responsible are this, these two souls, uh, as I understand now. Okay, what do you mean about the embryology then? Okay. The level, the, the environment. Level. environment. So you, have to uh, you have to say how they made it act to them and to them, and what is the difference be between the combination of gas state. So, because when they made it different leaves of the embryo, have some rules to do it, and to combine the gas state of the gases, to have a difference. You understand? This is the tricky question, what you have to answer. One minute, we can answer that question. But at the moment, here we don't have uh, capabilities to know everything. Which which salt uh, which salt will create bones? Which salt will, will create uh, um, skin tissue? Which salt will create muscle tissue? At the moment, we don't have this this knowledge. That's but, why we need we need a medical person, biologist. Who can do testings with this? Uh, yeah. With our simple test, it's uh, impossible to do uh, all the all the all the research or the explanation. That's why we need also other people who can help us. Elia, could you repeat the question in a simple way to Mr. Kes? Yeah, which one? The last, the one. last one. Good morning. The tricky one. Good morning, Elia. Morning, Mr. Kesh. Nice to hear you. 
Oh, nice for you. You're back again. <laughs> he thought the question last was because the guys told me I have some wrong point in my explanation. So the question is, what is the difference between different levels of embryology like ectoderm, endoderm, exoderm? How do nature understand how to mix the gun state of gases to create different level in the embryology, different layers? It like is, this is this over, over millions and billions of years, millions of years where the life started on this planet. These are all embedded in DNA in conjunction with the RNA. Okay. DNA so, carries the DNA carries the structural information, and RNA carries the what do you call it the uh, knowledge, yeah. or what we call like a soul, or you call it, or you call it the information. Transportation of the, information. The inf yes, so that's why you have a RNA, you have a physicality, and you have a well, like a memory bank in the back of it. Yeah. DNA only carries so the con in conjunction between the two, uh, you you what do you call it? You produce the right salt or the body through uh, parotidal glands produces the right salt in the right place. Uh, for production of the skin or the tissue or a skin of the tissue or um, the, what do you call it, uh, any other material which the body needs. Usually, in some cases, um, you don't need uh, one salt, but it's a combination of two salts. Yeah. Uh, like uh, the heart muscle. It's a combination of two or three salts, which creates the right tissue, not hard enough, but not soft enough to be like um, like a muscle or to be like uh, liquid, but uh, flexible enough not to be like a bone. Yes. So, for according to the to the um, what strength the body needs in a certain tissue. Through the one of the parietal glands and in conjunction with thymus, and with the lymph node, which is responsible for that organ, the right combination of <coughs> mixtures of salt or individual salt is used to create that tissue. Okay. Um, the but uh, this part of the information of the combination comes from RNA. The yeah. physical change in formation comes through DNA. Mm -hmm. That's why you have RNA and DNA parallel in the same yeah. kind of helix. So mm -hmm. this is the this is the way according to the environment where the energy is, the material is converted to what it needs to be. Okay, but the question was did you did you know at the moment each one south we have to combine to produce different kind of matters? For example, yes, to yes, to yes. In, in in due time, I'll teach. But uh, we in this too early. These guys have just uh, trying to stand on their legs. Don't ask them to run. Okay. But. Uh, uh, in time, yes, I'll teach you how to do it because in the space, as I always say, you can't go to a passenger and say, can I have your heart please for the captain? Mm -hmm. You should be able to produce, if you understand the combination the right way, you can even carry emotions to the heart yes. through the RNA. So this can be done. Okay. This is part of the process of the development. Um, there is, um, there is, I have to announce um, this, this, this is the next step in, the, in part of the process of teaching. Um, if, if they allow us to, to stay uh, online and if they allow us to, 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 what do you call it, to be able to teach, we teach everything. As you know, as I explained in the other 
uh, workshops. There is a whole, uh, it's a huge apparatus has run around trying to bring the foundation down. So we, we have to be alert and aware of it because we are putting too much technology out. As you saw this week, for three seconds, they managed to load uh, uh, free energy, no thank you, with my face with a cross on it, on the website of the foundation. Yeah. This is not one man, it's a huge organization is running around, they're trying to bring a criminal case that they can shut the technology down. And uh, so we go as far as we can, the way we can teach. It's time to literally mobilize all the knowledge and the people who want to receive the knowledge. Um, I have to announce, maybe we bring it forward, the technology is from the government handed over to nation. So mm -hmm. we hand over the technology and the space technology to, to, to the knowledge seekers. There is a move to put me in prison with false alleg allegations. They are trying to build up cases. We are aware of it. They already interviewed a lot of people around Belgium, Holland, and Germany, all sorts of places, trying to build the case up to shut the foundation forum and the foundation as a whole. But that's the responsibility of people who read the books and understand it to follow it up if they imprison me or whatever happens. So we, we are aware of assassination squads which are well, moving around Europe to, to create an accident. I tell you that very directly, we have report directly from the security of nations. So you have to understand how important it is to pass as much knowledge as possible to, to, for you lot to understand the principle and uh, in so many ways, the government of ta um, Taiwan has released the USB stick to its national scientists. So if anything happens to me, scientists in Taiwan have got the USB stick in their hands. So you as a public, you can go to the Taiwanese, we'll release their name and everything, that you can have access to the full knowledge, the medical patent, they have seen the patent number five, they have opened it, and they're working on it. So if anything happens to me or any government tries, hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. 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 If, if anything happens, if anything happens to me with these uh, cases which are trying to build up, um, the Taiwanese government has released a USB stick to its nationals. So the whole package of Cash Foundation is open to world population. Uh, and in those patents, there is enough information to handle the medical side, um, to handle the nanomaterial energy production, and the other two patents. So um we we are not sitting back we are monitoring is um uh, the knowledge seekers have seen how easy it is to use to produce protein in a simple actually like a coca-cola bottle again uh, using the nanomaterials you produce um the spaceship program will carry on the way it is they will try to to uh, try to block us, but uh, the time of the old is finished. The time of what they've been trying to block us is finished. There is enough knowledge, there is enough book sold, there is enough patent go. We, we released the Taiwanese, um, that we asked the Taiwanese to release the full package of USB stick worldwide. It'll be done, but in a secure way. Uh, so, uh, in a way, if what they tell us they receive from the government is correct, this is what I said we have to check, then uh, on a cash foundation or on your Facebook channels, you post this. This will stay for millions of years, for thousands of years, for people how to do things. The, I repeat again, the move is done in Belgium and it's done by the same people they are going to do a lot of things to stop me teaching, most probably by setting up a kangaroo court, the same as in Canada they did, 
um, to to accuse of whatever to stop the technology. The only thing, the only way it cannot be stopped is for people to to make it clear openly. This is the knowledge which belongs to you, and this time it cannot be blocked. We know there are six man assassination squad sitting about two hours away drive from where I live. And this has been given to us by national securities. So the people who think they are planning to do things, there are people within the structure of governments who are protecting the Cash Foundation. The Cash Foundation website most probably will be filtered that you cannot reach it. You set up alternative websites or whatever to carry on with the work. This is very, very clear. This is not something to to create a hype. When you hear it, then say, oh, he said it two weeks ago, three weeks ago. So as they think these people are doing things to stop you learning and teaching and getting yourself sorted for um, not a free energy, but a free life, but in collaboration with the cooperation with the governments and the, what you call multinationals. Uh, this is the stupidity of what they don't see. Um, you cannot kill a prophet of God. That's the bottom line. Our teaching is for good and forever. The time is finished. The time of old is finished. The time of the new is in the hand of people to understand the correct procedure. I release these in short terms, in short ways, in uh, coded messages for years. In the peace message, we said the scientific, the scientists are messengers of God. But if you look, we don't only teach science, we teach the ethics, which is the job of the prophets of God. You cannot silence prophets. They put a thorn on the head of the, uh, Christ, and they said, if you are a king, where is your, your throne? And we have seen now every law in every nation on this planet, being communist, non-communist, Christian, Muslim, is based on the teaching of Christ, because it's correct. The same is with this technology and what we really see. Doesn't matter. Those who take action against us will not survive, will not last, by the nature of what they do themselves to themselves. In so many emails, in so many communications, in so many writings people to us over years, they keep on asking me, even in press interviews, are you a messiah? What is a messiah? Changing everything they knew. How many times, how many prophets, how many world religious leaders have to say, you cannot do wrong, you cannot do this, you cannot steal. The change comes when you change the whole totality. And the change has come. We teach everything totally the way it is, the new way, and in conjunction how to use it in the space, not on the matter level of the man. So I go to the governments who are trying to filter us, trying to ban us, trying to imprison us, you banished, you put in prison, you killed a lot of prophets of the past. Time is over. You will not succeed. Physically, you might think you've done, but I want to know how many of you will last it to see it. So the message is very clear. We go back to what we've done, what we are doing. My message to world leaders is very clear. Collectively, between Canada, America, European uh, nations, you have put together a package to silence the Cash Foundation. You saw what happened to Jesus, to what you call um, to the Jews for what they did to Christ. They went for punishment for 2,000 years. You touch and you will see what happens to you as a whole. I have no, no doubt about what I'm talking about. Before you think to harm me or to harm the foundation, to harm the panel, you have picked up something which you do not even understand. My message to you is very clear. Do not touch what you don't understand and do not touch the prophet of God. Because we know everything and we do not need to be there to understand. 
this assassination program you put in position, this blocking of the foundation, this all warrants of arrest you're putting together, what happened to Christ? You crucified him, but now he rules the world. Our time has no dimension. That's my clear message. And if those people who don't understand or pretend not to understand, they say you call yourself a prophet or messiah, I don't call myself nothing. But the message what we brought, it will last beyond the kings who are temporarily on this small piece of the dust of the universe. I'm very clear to His Excellency President Obama, stop the procedure of planning or your government or Canadian government or European government to block us or for my assassination. The body will go, but the soul will be here and you have to live with it. Thank you very much. We go back to the spaceship program. If you look at the second floor of the, or what we call the zero floor of the space program, of the, the spacecraft, this accommodation is a 40 meter diameter with seating facilities and a control room. And this control room, these seating facilities, you can accommodate in a circle. These crafts do not have a front and a back. So if you are moving in one direction and uh, you think you are facing the direction of motion, immediately uh, if you want to go in another direction, you don't turn the plane around. You just change the direction of the field force in one of the three reactors or four reactors in combination. So the seating capacity in these systems is not or is not foreseen to be like an aircraft facing one direction. You can make them that way. But it is very much circle, like a football pitch. And you that's why you can carry a very large number of people. The feeding in these processes is very, very simple. You absorb most of the energy from the environment of the craft. So you'll find out you don't need to produce that much food to sustain the body. You create through your reactors energy which is in the dilution position that the body can absorb to live. So, as I always said in my talks, what we eat is 20% of the total energy we, are, we need for sustaining the physical side of the operation. 80% of the energy is absorbed by the brain and the skin directly. So, in so many ways, your brain, your skull, the skull on the, on the head of the man, is a filtering system for the energy which through the liquid of the brain balances that the body can absorb. In these crafts you feed your passengers through the same way. What this means, if this is, to, um, do you understand Elia? Yes sir, I am listening yeah. you. Okay, okay. In this, in this uh, process, I've said this before, if you, um, if you understand, if you remember in some of my talks in the past, we know that astronauts, the very first astronauts went to space, or cosmonauts, explained to us that they see flashes in their eyes, which was the radiation which goes through the skull and through the brain, and when it reaches the water of the eye, it releases the energy of a photon that, that used to be like a flash in the eye. Nowadays, all the astronauts, anyone who's in the space lab, report this effect all the time. Some shielding has been put to reduce the radiation, but some radiations are so strong that when they pass the wall of the, what do you call it, the space lab, they still go through and they reduce in the eye, in the salt of the eye, in the water of the eye, and they become a photon. So, by the same principle, 
you understand the energies of the brain, most of the energy of the brain, what a brain needs to work for its function is absorbed through the same kind of radiation which go through the skull and they reduce through the salt and they get absorbed by the body or by the brain. So in reality, you can do the same thing in your aircraft, in your spacecraft in the future, you do not need to sustain a large mass food consumption. Because the food is to create that energy. You can feed your passengers on all the floors, literally through the environment, majority of it through the environment. You don't need to carry all these, what do you call it, pre-packed frozen foods and dehydrated foods. You don't need to um, change anything to be able to produce different materials. You produce one material, which is the, which the easiest one is the breathing of the CO2. Then you convert the gas of CO2 in the flavor and the food you like to have. Because the human being breathes out CO2 that continuously supply you. So you need to have a good supply of nitrogen and a little bit of oxygen and uh, the rest, the breathing out of the man is ex exhaling, will give you through the conversion which the knowledge seekers are doing now in the lab, through a small salt or magnetic field of a salt into a matter and then you flavor the matter or you change the matter the way you like. You shape it the color you like. Because as you know, at this moment of time in the food industry, uh, all the colors of the foods uh, are homogeneous. You can buy a bottle of ketchup today uh, and you can buy a bottle of the same brand ketchup in five years time. They look and taste exactly the same. The color is always the same. As we are all men of life, we go to shops, we buy tomatoes this week, and it's not the same tomato next week. It's different color and shape. So how they achieve this homogeneous color, this is done through the coal. All the colors which are used now for most of the colors, 95% of the colors used for coloring food is produced through coal, through the carbon. And uh, you can repeat the same process to the man when he breathes out CO2. You can use part of that carbon for coloring the food. You want it the banana color or you would like it the steak color or would like it to be the color of uh, a vegetable. So it does not need to be because in a way the material which you absorb or which you produce as a gans of CO2 um, it's already in a state of the GANS. So when you eat it, it releases its energy directly to the body in a GANS state, which the body is built of and made of. If you remember in my previous talks, I say the minute you touch the CO2, you taste it. The minute you touch the GANS, you taste it. Why? because this gravitational magnetic field is in the GANS state, is in the state of your own body. So this explains more in the bits which we've been teaching past months and years. Why? Now everything comes together. So you will find out in most of these control systems, you need to only produce two or three materials as a reserve. Fusion does not happen in the universe. At the moment, man has the biggest problem fusing two atoms of hydrogen. How can they fuse to make food of, let's say, nitrogen or whatever, or calcium? The way you do it, you achieve Gans state, and the mixture of different ganses, you achieve the release of the energy in the level which the body needs, it will do it internally itself. So you convert the conversion of energy to gans 
and then when you reheat it, it becomes gas back to energy which your body needs. It's a much simpler process. It's uh, not in a matter state. Matter state is conditioned to the environmental magnetic fields like temperature and pressure. GANS is independent and is independent of the environmental. Uh, in the videos which the knowledge seekers are making, then we show how we do everything to try to destroy this GANS once they come out of the Coca-Cola bottles. You can put acid on it, you can put caustic on it, you can do all sorts of things with it, you cannot destroy it. Because when you convert energy to, or gases to GANS, you release energy. And if you can put back the same energy in the gas, the gas will convert back to the gas. This is why when we cremate the body of the man, we are left with the salt. Because part of the process of burning the fire gives the same gravitational magnetic field back to the gas to be, for it to be converted into a gas. So in fact, if you can control a crematorium where you cremate a body and you can absorb all the gases and hold them and put them through the salt position, you can have the body of the man back. But you got to know which part goes where. This is the, this is the reality about the creation. As much as we call about the conservation of energy, this is the conservation of magnetic gravitational field. So, if, if you cremate or you burn something, because you give the same gravitational magnetic field energy back to the gas, it converts back to the gas. And if you get the same gas and put it through the same salt processing, make it a gas, where through the salt you absorb or you release part of the gravitational magnetic field of the gas, which we use it to run a motor or we show it as a light, then you have a gas. This is the this is a secret about the creation. Up to now, you are used to pressure and temperature to go from solid to gas to liquid, or solid to liquid to gas. Depends what which one combination of which two or one you use. Now the new conversion is taking or adding to the mass of the gravitational magnetic field of a matter. If you bring it into a plasma condition, you put as much as you like a plasma of a, a plutonium, or you can put the plasma of a neutron, and you get a neutron, or you get a plutonium. It's just the size of the entity, the quantity in it. As I always say, it's a quantity in the entity. Proton, neutron, electron. You add more of the same in the same in, in a plasma, you get a bigger plasma with a bigger. So uh, for a gold, you have, we call it, uh, what do you call it? Um, so many electrons and so many protons. Uh, for hydrogen, you have one or two electrons and protons. So if you understand the size of the package, you just add that number into the package, you get what you need. It's very much like making an ice cream. The more milk you put in, the bigger ice cream you get. With this process, the same thing is the more you put uh, energy and magnetic field, gravitational field of an entity, that's what you're getting to get. So making gold, there is no problem. Making plutonium, there is no problem. But if you need it, it's in the holy writings, in the script, that say the maturity of the man will come when he understands the transmutation of the matter. And now man is matured to understand the transmutation of matter, how you transmit it from one to another. So the man at this stage is matured enough to rejoin the universal community. Those who want to keep us illiterate and in the village of earth, they are doing their best to stop the foundation. If you want to stay in a village and be like animals killing each other every day, for a piece of land or a piece of food or how many grams of gold, carry on. We have opened the knowledge of God and the universe to you all. And you have to understand how simple it is. 
man has reached the point of maturity. But like every family, when you have a child in the first class, you can't teach him about chemistry, which is the, uh, what you call a secondary, and you cannot teach uh, philosophy to a one-year-old child. The human race is in the different ages and different classes, and as they mature, they understand more on that one level to another. And there is enough men matured with the support of the, what we see now as the internet to be able to make the first excursion and join out of this village of earth to universal community. This has been my job. This is the responsibility I accept as a prophet of God to do. And I think I have accomplished it. There is a little bit more time to do does not matter what people try to do to me. Till I do not finish, there is no time to live. And I decide the time and the place and not the human race. Very clear. Very, very clear. Our job is to make sure this process goes through smoothly. All the kings, you lose your crowns. All the presidents, you'll beg for the space to have a hole to live in. But our rules and our knowledge will be forever because this is the way the universe works. If you look at the structure of the matter of the uh, spacecraft, the structure can be anything you like. Aluminium, fiberglass, steel, wood, uh, because it does not matter what you use. The reactors create a gravitational magnetic field which the matter will never come in touch with this environment. So you create a gravitational magnetic field which holds the gravity as 1g in one section of the passengers on one level. And then you change gravitational magnetic fields of the destination point in level minus 2 in the direction of the um, attraction. What you do, you don't burn fuel. As we always said, in the reactors number three, or on the second, the three reactor combination of universal system, you create the gravitational magnetic field of the destination. Be it next planet, be it in the center of a sun, be it another galaxy, you get attracted to that point according because you tune into the magnetic fields of that position. Are we still online? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. So, in fact, if this is yesterday, I showed the knowledge seekers the difference between a solid magnet and a ring magnet what we call the O-ring magnets. If you want to understand the working of a plasma, buy different size dimensions O-ring magnets. And stick them together that you can make a sphere inside or elliptical shape plasma inside. Then you understand how your reactor works. Yesterday, luckily, John had a small spherical magnet with him in his pocket. He's got a bunch of them. He makes different things with him every day. Uh, he, we put one of these spherical magnets, like behaving like a plasma, in a see-through sphere. And I showed how we can and how the difference is between using a solid magnet to change the structure of the, or uh, movement of the plasma, or use a ring magnet. And they've seen how easily the, 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 the magnet, the spherical magnet moves inside. The spherical magnets, inside the spherical magnet, is very much the behavior of a plasma. In the center, there is a rush, there is a stronger magnetic field. You call that the principle. 
between the center and to the wall of the inner part of the ring, this is your transition. And the ring is a matter state. If you understand this, you can do the same thing with the plasma inside your reactors. What this means, you can push your reactor plasma to one side, in conjunction with, let's say, one of the reactors in the lower floor, that you would like to create gold or diamonds or whatever from that space structure gap. You push the plasma, you compress the plasma to another side of to another reactor, which what we call it, let's say reactor number two in the minus two floor, to produce different things. But this is very much materialistic. In the long run, you will learn you can do the same thing in your reactors and outside your reactors. So, um, to understand the same thing, go back, use the magnets, use the ring magnets, use solid magnets to create and control the protein in the body of the man. This is how we use magnets in our medical side. Understanding, the, um, the, the Belgian police has been going around telling, you know, it's only magnets, it's fooling everybody. It's just selling magnets. But if you sell magnets and we understand the process of a magnet, how come people can walk? How come people can do things which they couldn't do before? It's understanding the structure of the plasma and where you put the system. If this is too far-fetched for you to do, to understand, go back to the human level of why people go to certain springs and they say the water from the spring is good for the eye. Uh, or they go to another spring, they take the water, say this is good if you have a cancer. And they go to another spring and they get water, they say this is good for rheumatism. Think, where has the water been? The water goes through the inner sanctum of the earth and gets interacted by the different gravitational and magnetic field of the different matter which is going through. So, as the body of the man is made of the essence of the earth, hydrogen, carbon, and nitrogen, and oxygen, the oxygen of the water, H2O, in conjunction with other minerals which are attached to it, carry the energy, plasmatic magnetic field energy, which matches, let's say, the situation or with the salt which is in the eye. So when you drink the eye, the water, that field matches exactly to what is the salt in your eye or the combination of the water salt in your eye, and then affects its position or affects its structure and you can see better or you get rheumatism changes. That's all we do in all our systems. We understand the concept and principle of creation. Now they can say the guy uses magnets, it's all empty. Look at how it's calculated to be where it is, what it does. And again, it's the same as what I said, it's destination position. You target to go to moon, you make your reactors to get gravitational magnetic field of the moon, you don't burn any more energy. The space rocket, the space technology is finished, as we said all the time. Now there are six, seven reactors running here in Italy, and uh, we have given the design to the Italian manufacturers to produce the energy reactors. That's all it is. You produce gravitational magnetic field of the destination. Destination is Mars. Destination is Jupiter. Destination is the cell in your cancer. Destination is food in your stomach. What it can absorb. As we showed with Fukushima, there is no magic once you understand how simple it is. So, in your reactors, you can use your reactors, the combination of different fields of your reactors, if your passenger gets cancer, to sort the cancer out. You create the destination of the cancer, 
the cell, you can measure it, and what do you do? You can saturate it or you can give instruction to place which control the solidity of the matter in your body to um, not to solidify, not to become cancer. So your reactors in your spaceships, what we are going to develop, can be used in different way as your medicine system, as you produce what you need. Now you understand, in this graph which we now set out to produce, everything a man needs to be independent of this planet is in the hand of the man. Those who want to block us, to assassinate us, to stop the technology, are the ones who want to tie us to this planet, that they can abuse us. Where the man has the freedom to do what he likes in the freedom of the space. And I warn those leaders, I warn His Excellency President Obama, American government, Canadian government, and the European government. If we call for help, there will be no nation left. Very, very clear. We are not here alone on our own. And if you have not understood this by now, you will understand this from now on. Work with us, we support workforce, we support new technology, we support new energy system. Your governments become richer because of us, not financially, but intellectually and morally. All these reactors, all these technologies create millions and millions of new research opportunities. It creates opportunities beyond the dream of how much gold you want to put in the reserve. Block us, we wipe you out. Not me, but the process is very easy. You do it to yourself. You all get cancer. You all get all sorts of diseases. When it comes to the point, the last thing says, God help. The last breath before you get, you take, you ask for God forgiveness and for something to release you from the pain. The God is here and is giving you the answer and the medicine. It's you who refuses it. So, in one reactor, you have food, you have medicine, you have energy, you have motion, and it's exactly like a reactor called Earth. Earth gives you all that. Now we learn the laws of the universe. You go further out, in the higher levels, in the level 2 and 3, it's just literally for accommodation. Because if you need rest or you want to go somewhere, everything is available. The size of these crafts are totally dependent on the strength of the magnetic gravitational field your reactors can create and maintain a safe flight position. And what material you put and you load inside it. You don't need to um, carry heavy materials as a fuel because you can continuously create your own uh, plasma or hydrogen as a storage to feed. I'm teaching everything possible to the uh, knowledge seekers in a very, very clear way that they can see the connection between the plasma of a reactor, the plasma of the um, body, the plasma of a mat matter, and Every day in the lab, we do everything at the same time. Uh, we work on the different parts, the, each group. The, the, we got group of one or twos or individuals working on different reactors. That, that are developing their own version and their own taste of uh, reactors. But once they finished as a group of four, they have to put these four reactors together to be able to create lift, to create food, to create everything which is needed for a spacecraft. So, one is uh, brought his reactor from Slovenia, 
and it's all steel. We're trying to produce matter inside it. We have uh, one which is brought uh, ceramic reactor. Is building different things with it. The ceramic reactor, because it's an earth material, will be good for producing food from the earth, or it allows us to produce matters which man likes to eat. I'll explain that in the future. That's why I support the ceramic reactor, because it will have the taste of home. It will have the taste of the food we get from this planet. Then we have a reactor which is made by the by the Iranian engineers in Tehran when I was there, which is made of plastic. And we have an American citizen and a Czech Republic citizen together working to make it to work, to fly, to lift. And then we have another reactor, which is a combination reactor between plastic and copper. It's a very specific. The, the copper one was built by the Iranian scientists in Tehran, and the plastic one was made by the scientists in Antwerp. And one half of it was built by a bunch of scientists from Belgium in uh, east in west of Belgium. And that is a combination um, reactor. We put the four reactors together on the universal table which we have in one of the labs. And together, working, they can fly, they can move. This is to show that creation of plasma and creation of food and creation of motion and energy is independent of the material which contains the plasma. This is a simple way, as we said, the slavery to matter with this technology is finished. They have shown, they have, they have been taught yesterday how to create gold. How simple it is to create gold, which has been the mystery of the man to do. The process has been explained, and now with the reactors they can produce. Yesterday they have seen for the first time how easily you can convert the gases into protein. And then they find out that today, maybe tomorrow, that the protein will disappear because the system condition changes. The protein, which is the nitrogen, gets dissolved back into the matter. So um, every point of the teaching in respect to these reactors, the space technology and the craft, is done collectively. It's not done by one person. Because people who sit around this table have to understand everything. And they are taught the ethics and they are taught the, the, the consequence of their decision making. Psychologically, pressure wise and the rest. The same as with our medical re reactors. They are all, if you decide, can interact with RNA and affect their psychology. If you look at your own brain, you have the inner brain. The inner brain is your RNA. The outer brain is your DNA. So you connect the two together, you can create the body of the man with the essence of his life, which is his center, anywhere in the universe. In time, man will learn, you do not need to carry the physicality. If you can carry the part of the uh, ethics, what we call the center brain. This is far for man to understand. It's beyond your understanding. But in the very near future, the ones who use this technology and take to space and then come across the other people of the village of universe, they will understand how easily it's done. I go back to one thing because this is important. You will understand very soon. I go back to the governments of United States, to the Canadian government and the European EU. Stop this process of assassination and trying to build up a court case against Cass Foundation. You can take me to court, there is no problem, but you cannot stop the knowledge which is released and is in the hand of the man. If you don't understand it, it's your problem. The table of knowledge in the foundation is open for you and your scientists. I have sent an invitation to Mr. Dallas Penhoff in Boeing Corporation, which is a connection between NASA and Boeing, 
to bring scientists from Boeing for development of the aircraft. I have sent a direct invitation to NASA to Mr. Nelson, who have invited us to NASA to join us to teach, to learn, to develop. My invitation goes to the Iranian Space Agency and Space Iranian aircraft industry. Join us on the table the way you did in Tehran. We can go further. The same goes with the Chinese Space Agency. The control cannot be in the hand of one cult. Now, the Chinese are developing and the Taiwanese government has released the technology to its people. You try to get the cat back in the back. Impossible. I ask for Taiwanese scientists who receive the key and they say they've received it from their government, the USB stick with a five patent. Please release it today on the internet. Please release all the patents. If you will confirm you received it, and what you send to me is confirms you know something about it, release it. Do not wait for our appointed time of meeting and discussion. We'll discuss it further. You know who you are, and we know who you are. And the authorities know who you are because they monitor my emails. Please release the, the full USB stick into public. You have my right, you have my authorization. Any questions? Hello? Uh, I have a question. Uh, Who's about, speaking? Uh, uh, I'm here from the Who's? Netherlands group from Belgium. Yes. Yes. And uh, I'm uh, busy with uh, the nano layering. Uh, I made uh, some videos of it, and I wanted to know if I made some mistakes. I don't know. What if, have you uh, done to it? Can you repeat, please? <laughs> I, I've made uh, videos of it. It's on my YouTube uh, channel. Yes. And I, yeah. I wanted to, to know if I made uh, some mistakes or something. I have not seen it. I'll, I'll look at okay. it uh, and I'll tell okay. you later on through the knowledge seekers. Okay. Uh, I have another question about uh, the amount of the gases or the uh, uh, hydrogen um, uh, in the uh, reactor. Uh, you talked about uh, uh, start pressure one bar. Um, before you told us uh, one centimeter um, tube is uh, uh, the amount of gas is too big in it. Um, you know, it's a little bit uh, confusing. Uh, I tried uh, several things to reduce uh, the amount, but uh, that's not uh, really clear. Uh, the way the way I the way I usually do the the process, you you have to understand. Once you coated your reactor, once you sealed your reactor, you create a very high vacuum in it and leave it for a day or two. This, there is a lot of noise in the background. This will allow any surface matter which is going to open up and to be released. Then you fill your cylinder, your, what do you call it, your reactor, 
with hydrogen. Uh, let's say if it depends on the size of your reactor, you fill it with, let's say, if you use a um, six millimeter tube, yes. uh, put a valve on either end of the 10 centimeter, um, take, pick 10 centimeter, fill at one bar this centimeter with hydrogen, and yes. then vacuum your system fully, and then open the gas to go in your chamber. So you fill the chamber only with hydrogen. Don't rotate, don't do anything. Leave it for maybe a day or so. Yep. The, the hydrogen goes in and fills up any gaps or if there is any combination to be done, any chemical interaction, then you evacuate your chamber again to the full. Then you repeat the process two or three times. That uh, majority of the molecules in your chamber will be of uh, hydrogen. Don't forget, do not, while you're making your course, never touch with a bare hand and make sure you don't touch the center or anywhere inside your reactor core because you leave a fingerprint and the fingerprint as we all know is fat based amino acid based so you don't leave any fat inside then when you've done this two three times then you choose you vacuum your chamber then you choose Let's say the minimum I've managed up to now to do because of the valves I use is five centimeter. Because you have to push your tube on one end into the valve, one side and the other side. So about yes. five centimeter is the minimum I've managed to achieve that I can keep some, uh, I can see at least a bit of a pipe between the two, what do you call it, two valves. You fill in this with one bar of hydrogen. Then you connect the feeding side to, let's say, about a meter of pipe, which is vacuumed. And then at the end of this meter, you put another five centimeter or 10 centimeter tube which is already vacuumed, and you connect the other end of it to your reactor. So before you start the, ever your procedure, you, you have your gas tank, you have a valve which controls the gas to the, from the tank to the core, you put a 10 centimeter pipe, you put another valve, this is the control that you know you have five centimeter or 10 centimeter, you decide. I do it five centimeter because it's much easier later on. So first valve, the tank, first valve, five centimeter, second valve, a meter of uh, five, um, what do you call it, six millimeter tube, then another valve, then five centimeter, then another valve, and then a pipe to your reactor. You have to devise a way that somewhere you can, from the first valve, after the tank, you can vacuum the whole tube, all these parts plus your core together. Yeah. So yeah. what do you do? You open all the four valves in a way, but you usually have to have a valve at the point of your reactor core too. So your plasma does not come out, but does not backfeed, so plasma stays in the core. So you have a valve by the core, you have two valves for the, the pipe, you have a meter, you have two more valves. You open all the valves and you vacuum your pump. All the time you work this way. Then 
you close your when when you reach your vacuum, you close all the valves, and you start you open the first valve from your hydrogen tank. You feed five centimeter, or uh, you feed the gas into the five centimeter tube. You close both together. You allow the gas to settle, just for a couple of minutes. Then you open the valve and you release the whole gas in the one meter tube. So what you do, you expand the gas in in 20 times more volume. So the gases open up. Then you uh, open the third valve, which opens to your second five centimeter, and then you close it. So whatever gas is expanded in the meter, part of it goes into that five centimeter. Then you open the valve to your reactor and you open the valve from the five centimeter to the reactor. The vacuum condition in your core will suck this whatever is in that five centimeter into itself. So this has become the first load for your reactor. This plasma, this gas, because you've done all your vacuum and gassing of the hydrogen before, it becomes your first loading. And most of the time, immediately gets absorbed or it goes into different, what, whatever you call it, in the, in the body of the reactor or in the, in the space of the reactor. Okay. There are two points. There are two points. Before you start vacuuming or during the time you vacuum, before you start the first load of the first, last five centimeter, you run your reactor for about five or ten minutes. That if there are any heavy gases left, any heavy material left, due to centrifuge, will go into the nanomaterial. This is one of the reasons we use nanomaterials, because it's like a sponge, so these materials don't stay on the surface of the nanomaterial. Through the gaps and holes, they get pushed to the physical boundary of the core in the back layers of the nano layer. So what you get in the outer layer in facing the hydrogen is more or less pure surface. Now that you've fed your um, hydrogen in, the hydrogen opens up to the full volume of the nanomaterial. And as it's opening up very slowly, due to gravitational magnetic fields and the porosity of the nano layers, which are mostly in the gas state, electrons are absorbed in these gaps because they are more or less of the same matching. It's filtering. So you're going to be left with some uh, plasma. <coughs> if you have tools to monitor, you'll find that every time or the first time you feed the gas in, you will see a drop or change in the flow of magnetic field of your plasma, which means the plasma is literally acting and pushing into the nanomaterials, very much like piezoelectric, puts pressure on it, they release some of their energy, you can pick it up. This shows you, you created the plasma or not. One of the tests you can do is that you again repeat the process. I explained this yesterday in the lab. You make sure, this is, this is very, very important to understand. This is more important than anything else if you want a stable reactor. For a smooth, very, very smooth operation, never feed the gas into the center of the reactor. 
because by laws of centrifuge and gravity and um, magnetic fields and vacuum, when you when you already create the plasma and you feed your second cycle of hydrogen in, the hydrogen has to go to the outer boundary. So it has to pass through the plasma which you've created, it, it collapses your plasma. If I can explain, it's like when you put a pot on a water on a on a on a cooker, you see the bubbles of hydrogen oxygen coming all the way up to the top through the water. You do the same thing with your plasma, so you disturb the plasma. The feeding of the gas into your reactor has to be from outer surface that the gas comes in from the outer boundary and as it gets into as as through the uh, what they call it the vacuum rotation and the nano materials gets ionized it joins from outer to the center plasma so in a way you squeeze your original plasma further in when you add hydrogen at, in this method, you literally, as you ionize, because you're doing very, very minute amounts, as you increase your pressure, as you, you increase your gases, you increase the pressure on the center plasma. And then you start getting nano layering of plasma one on top of each other. If you build enough pressure, by experience you will learn, Single core reactors are the best reactors for movement because now you create the same condition by different magnetic field strength of plasma over each other, the same condition at the center of the sun. On Earth, we have the partition, what we call the solid core. In the universe, in the magnetic field in your body, there is no partition. The partition is created due to difference in gravitational magnetic field strength between layers. And as they interact with other layers, they create the initial gravity. In a space technology, you do not run multi-core reactors by the solid partition. For teaching, we use it. But in, the, in essence, even I was teaching yesterday to the knowledge seekers, you do not need to increase pressure. With using your second or third reactors outside in the, what we call the minus two level, you can pressurize your plasma to create sudden increase in going, for example, from, uh, higher, from the matter or from the lower transition strength to higher transition because you reduce the size of the plasma, it becomes a strong, you increase your gravity magnetic field in a very rapid way in a nanosecond and you do not need to, what do you call it, do anything else. You do not, to, you, you, in the space technology gravitational system, you do not control your plasma for gravity by feeding materials. You control your gravitational magnetic field by squeezing and increasing the layer's pressures on your center plasma because it's always there. And your magnetic field production for the energy is in the same way. So you have to understand the operation. You, if you have a central column which feeds into your reactor, you need that central column for something else. But you got to make sure that your gases are not released through the center of column tip. It has to, the gas has to be released where the central column comes into the core, at the right the edge interface. Otherwise, you create a plasma and then says, oh, it doesn't work. Because you created that bubble at the bottom of the cooking pot, and that bubble, due to gravitational magnetic field and due to mm, rotation of core and through the vacuum condition, has to go to the outer boundary. So it has to go through your plasma. It disturbs the plasma. 
So you collapse the plasma, now you made a thicker layer, now your plasma is not in touch with your nano layer to be kept as a plasma, so you lose your plasma so the system doesn't work. The process, you have to understand what you're doing. But we keep a center point in the plasma, nano-coated, because in fact we allow continuous, uh, what we call like a principal point in the center of reactor. By keeping the central column in the center, and you, when you put nanomaterials on it, you don't allow your plasma to bubble. The reason for central column nano-coated the way we all we said is not there to feed the gas in. The purpose for it is to have a center point that in high transformation you keep a stable plasma. Your plasma doesn't go out to wobble and touch the walls and all sorts. The feeding has to come at the point of entry of the central column in your reactor. You feed, it's like you put a blanket on. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. I don't have a, a central coil. Yep. So, in fact, you create multi-layering through your hydrogen. And yep. then you can, you can create a multi-layering through nitrogen and argon or whatever in the same reactor or other reactors. And this gives you the effect of the salt for the proposition. What you nano layer as a layering in the reactor dictates how your reactor will be and what it can produce. Because your nano layering, your what you call blanketing of the gases, is the limit of the matter you want to produce. If you use argon, Producing matters up to argon level becomes very easy. Hydrogen sits below, nitrogen sits below, sodium, which is part of the salt, sits below. So your outer layer boundary dictates the material you can produce in your core in so many ways if you want to do it in efficient, continuous production, unless you convert the matter to that level in your plasma field. That's a very advanced technology. The the loading table I uh, I used for the gases um, I I, uh, I used at first uh, one centimeter and a half, uh, then fifty centimeters, then one centimeter, and uh, then uh, was the pipe to the uh, collector. Uh, where all the gases uh, mix, and after uh, that uh, was uh, this was for loading in the uh, reactor. So I, I started also with one bar or a half bar, and uh, loaded that bar in uh, one centimeter, well, one centimeter and a half uh, pipe from. Uh, Diameter six. That was the starting point. Do you do you you mean you are mixing your gases before you feed them into the core? Yes, that was uh, what I did. But and what was, did you uh, get? It was it was only experimenting, you know. <laughs> yeah, I've done and that. I know, that. but what did you get? I've I've done the same uh, experiment as you mixing and then loading in one go. Uh, I had uh, nothing, uh, but uh, I was experimenting uh, to for the ceilings uh, with uh, the gases uh, and that stuff. Uh, yeah, it's also because I, I had a coating uh, on the inside. We, at first, we thought uh, at calcium, but uh, it's very difficult to get it and dangerous too. <laughs> So uh, now we know uh, we can work with uh, the nano layering and uh, the core house are now in the almost in the third stage of the layering. So uh, it will be uh, next week, I think uh, they will be ready, I hope. 
And, uh, I teach you. I teach you a trick. I teach you a trick. Um, the trick is when you build your reactor, when you finish coating it, the third coating, or when you finish coating. If you have, I've done this, and it is it works perfectly. If you have a good strong ring magnet, or you can um, you can get hold of a good strong um, two good strong small ring magnets or the magnets with a hole in it. <coughs> yeah, put yeah, this inside good. your reactor. Put some, put this inside your reactor in the center if you have a central column, and rotate it for a few minutes. Um, if it's easy for you to open your cores and see it, if it's too difficult, you don't need to do it. You'll find out most of the impurities, metallic impurities, and just below iron, will be attracted to the center. Or, they'll be pushed to the outer boundary below your interface of the nanomaterial and the matter. This will give you a very clean uh, washing of your, what do you call it, matters in the core. Okay. So, so I you, don't, I don't if have you, a central column. Okay, if you don't have, if you don't have, you, the other thing you can do is... I can make um, no, but you can do it if you cannot get in there and open it and seal it again. Is um, get um, get one solid uh, magnet, round magnet. Not you always. When I speak with a magnet, I'm talking about circular magnet, not the rectangular yeah. and other shapes. Yeah. It has to be circular. You 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 get a ring magnet and you get a. Uh, what do you call it, a solid magnet, and um, you spend 10 or 15 minutes literally um, gluing the matters to the back of nanomaterial. What it is, is you hold the, you have to know what, exactly which one you're doing. You have to use the north pole of the ring magnet which is the exit point, yes. and you have to use the south pole of the solid magnet. You understand? Yes. So yeah. the flow of the field is from the ring to the solid. And what you do, you rotate your hand very close to your reactor before even you mount it, when you don't know if you can dismount it or whatever, even if it's mounted, doesn't matter. It, around your reactor very, very slowly. What this does, it creates a flow, very strong flow, that some of the impurities of material in your, um, in your core get literally glued into the layers and into the gaps of the nano layer coating you've produced. So in a way, you create a magnetic wind. Yeah. You can do this if, if, if you want to produce a much stronger magnetic field. If you have somebody who works with you, you produce two, you hold two um, ring magnets on one side together and one single uh, solid magnet on the other side. And then what you do, you can move the two ring magnets slightly away from each other and back together. And these two, as they interact, they, and the field has to go through the solid magnet, you find out you can do a lot of cleanup of the matter in your cores. Then you, you get a very smooth, beautiful plasma condition when you run your reactors. This is the same prop the same proposition change the core to the cancer cell in the body of the man. This is what they tell us uses empty magnets in your reactors. No, we know exactly what we are doing. 
So you put the cancer within the boundary and you allow it to push to, to go and to come back. And you can energize it. It receives a plasma. You can use with the, with the human body because it's made of plasma. You don't use a solid in so many ways. You can use solid for a specific conditions for boundarying but you can use two ring magnets. So it's a plasma interacting with the plasma of the body of the man. And then the body receives, the body decides what to do with it. But you cannot cause a new disease with it because that magnetic field cannot take more than what it has. So it cannot convert it to matter. Do you understand? Yes. Yeah, sure. So the same thing you do in your reactors. We have opened the knowledge of the medical application, so there is no limitation. And this is in response to the people who are going around and telling us he just uses a magnet. You stupid people, you don't understand. Your life is made of it. Your life operates through it. You eat through it and you live through it. So. Yes. Sorry. Um, the those advertisements that we've all seen on TV with the magnet that goes around your wrists. So that could really have a benefit. Mm. Uh, there is a, there is a question on it. Depends how it's done. And secondly, what they do it and how they produce it. You see people use, uh, they say they create magnetic resonance. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Yes, yeah. The people who use magnetic resonance, that is, to me, is totally a nonsense. Plasma does not have a resonance. So you cannot, or to, it does not, that's why you don't see much success with a lot of it, because um, when you do these things, then you limit to the matter level where you work in the plasma. The, the, as I said, a, a ring magnet carries the full spectrum of the um, principle, transition, and the matter. And whatever is weak of, whatever it needs to be done, the plasma absorbs. So you do the same thing in your reactors. Um, I was talking yesterday about how you can make vacuum without the high expensive vacuum pumps. You can do the same creating high vacuum in your reactors using a combination of the magnets. If you, uh, as I was saying yesterday, we don't have a high vacuum pumps in the universe that creates such a vacuum, high vacuum. Uh, the lack of matter or what we call vacuum, as the matter is made of magnetic field, is done by other magnetic fields. So you can create a system that you can vacuum your system without any pump using magnets. The same way as I explained. You glue your matter in the, pla in your, in the sphere of your plasma to the wall of the plasma, or you push it to be trapped in the sponge of your nano layers. Or you can do a certain way to extract the material through the pipes and use the filter. It's a more difficult one. But uh, do what, what exactly is done in the universe. You don't need high vacuum pumps. You can create a most beautiful minus 8, 10 millibars using several magnets uh, around your reactor. Or you can use in a combination other reactors to create vacuum in the other one. All you do, you extract or you divert the matter from the environment where it is. Its fields will be left behind, but there is no matter. This is what we call a vacuum. This is how vacuum is created. Lack of matter or lack of magnetic field of the certain strength. So... If you understood what I explained, we try to make a video of it uh, in the lab and put it on that you can understand. You, you can produce magnetic winds, and through the magnetic winds, uh, extract all the material. But there is something I have to explain. Um, 
when you create this uh, cleaning up of your reactor, do not go with your ring reactor all over the core. Because what you're going to do, you glue it on one side and you go over it with the other magnet, you push it back in the core again. Do you understand? So what it is, you have to decide which side of the core is going to be the dumping ground. And you do not go over it with the ring magnets. If you choose that you're going to have most of your material in your core to be trapped in the nano layers of the southern half of your reactor core, you do that. But then you don't take your what do you call ring magnets and go on the southern half. Then you release what you absorb back into the core again, and you're trying to glue it somewhere else. So uh, you have to plan your strategy, how you're going to do it, before you close the reactor. Because I'll teach you later on. Part of the process, you can produce that one side of your, um, what you do literally, you um, coat your upper half three times, you coat your bottom half four times. So okay. you use the lower, lower layers to dump in any impurities in the core. That when you create a plasma, the, the magnetic field between the three cores outside are more or less the same. You get a homogeneous plasma sphere shape. So before you go to, to the phase of even finishing, you have to create a place. You have to place a dumping area. You have to storage. Huh? And in nanomaterial storage, in a GANS state, the storage is done through the gaps and holes. You can use, uh, for example, before you even start the first layer in your southern hemisphere, you use uh, in your caustic materials like aluminium. You put your core, but you put some aluminium foil in it or some other material than your core uh, into the caustic that that creates a different environment in the first layer. It creates a combination layer that then you can use that combination layer in your uh, in your hemisphere, southern hemisphere as a dumping place. And then you yeah. allow your nano thing to be done on the top. I have uh, aluminium foil and uh, PET plastic. Who's speaking? Plastic. Who's speaking? Uh, here. Oh, good. Can I ask you, I was laughing yesterday about your reactor. Is that the one with yeah. the aluminium core? You've got aluminium core. No. Vince, is no. that you? Stainless steel. No, stainless that's, that's mine. Yeah, that's mine. As, as ah, expensive. okay, yeah, yeah. Just, just one second. I wanted to ask a question from Vince. Uh, Wins, is your reactor still in the in the caustic? No, they are in the second process. Is there any of it left? <laughs> because I could see it all bubbling up in your video. Yeah, exactly. I thought very and, uh, no, I, I thought very. <laughs> I thought soon it'll be imaginary core. <laughs> 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 I've seen that. I've done the aluminium. I know you get that process. Okay. Any other question? Uh, yeah, I have another question. Um, we have uh, the benefit to have uh, Joe Van der uh, Van der Mulenbroek in our uh, group now, and uh, hmm? I heard his uh, Yo Joe. From, oh, uh, Doctor Yo. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, he, he is with us now in our group. Uh, yeah. yeah. For me, it's uh, it's more easy because he is uh, uh, living uh, ten kilometers road. from from here. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I heard uh, several stories uh, from before uh, with the coma patient, and I think I understand now more 
uh, how you build these simple reactors. Um, I think uh, it's also with the use of a central magnet uh, and um, uh, nano layering also, I think. Yes, 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 yes. Um, I heard you position, positioned the uh, reactors on uh, several um, uh, corners of the room and turned them around and um, to position the plasma on the body of the patient. That's why I, uh, what I uh, could understand with uh, all the lessons uh, you give, gave uh, on the workshops. <laughs> Am I correct? Um, in a way, yes, because as you know, Yo was um, uh, present because Yo has a different talent and can bring different physical operation into, into the functioning of the body. <clears throat> and he he was um, present. Actually, his daughter came once or twice as well. Uh, how we reversed the coma patient. Uh, he was one of the four medical people who supported us. And um, what do you call it? He's seen the, the whole process, how you can reverse coma. Uh, so he can give you a good, um, good uh, indication. You have to understand the process. Once you understand the process, the working of the universe is the same, doesn't matter where you are. Uh, so he, I think if I remember, um, he's seen how we can transfer the functioning of the brain to the nerves of the jaw and through it allow the brain to do, uh, uh, what do you call it, repair while we could control the physical hand of foot and movement of everything through the nerves of the jaw physically. If he explains to you, he's been there. He's been videoed. Uh, we made a video with him he's, uh, when he was there. But that yeah. is the total principle. This is the principle of understanding. You, <clears throat> Part of the process is people say, oh, you use a magnet or whatever. Uh, I keep on telling you in a very simple way, uh, nanomaterials is part of the nanomaterial is part of um, when you clean a magnet before you put it in your fingerprint on the magnet where you put it dictates what protein will be touched in the body Do you understand? Uh, yes. So, if, if you understand the creation, so the, your fingerprint, the protein from your fingerprint <coughs> has an effect on the magnet. This is why these people look for everything and say it's an empty magnet. Because they don't understand the essence of creation. Yeah. So, you can do the same thing in your reactors. You can do the same thing in your uh, in your uh, in your uh, operation control of the reactors in space technology. You put as part of the fingerprint only of the protein of the what do you call it of the captain. So. In a way, that protein combination, what it gives you, the indication of that life, is his fingerprint in that the computer allows. Because if you have 500 people in a, on board of a plane, on the craft, and half of them think they want to go to the left, and the other half want to go to the right, uh, you don't know where you're going. And if you don't have a physical control, you, you control your reactors by fingerprinting of the body of the, what do you call it, the amino acid of the man. 
and you do the same thing in your medical application. You have to understand the extent of the knowledge, and then you open it up in different ways. Uh, he told also that you you used uh, coffee pots uh, and uh, things from the hardware store. Uh, now we are all looking for uh, spheres. Uh, it's not always easy to uh, to get uh, the right uh, stuff. But um, example, uh, yeah, they, when we uh, when someone wants uh, to to build a simple reactor for uh, medical use or something, uh, is it also um, possible to make one in a cylinder shape uh, in, in PVC or something? You can make it in any shape you like. You can make it in any shape. You see, what you think it will happen to you. Uh, you mentioned you, and I... I hope you understand the reason I disclosed is not trying to go into the private side of the life. Yo yeah, has a, yeah, she, he has a beautiful girl, she beautiful daughter. She is in university in Leuven and she has fascinated me through her because she's been to see the coma patient. I took her up to study her structure. She's an extremely beautiful young girl, but she has a talent. She plays harp. And in her, from childhood, wanting to play harp, and the love she has to play, she plays harp gorgeously. Um, because with Yo, I have a private, uh, what do you call it, um, connection as well or with the family we meet each other yeah, and um, over um, over her life there has never been there has never been a what do you call a heart prayer in the family so from childhood in in wanting to play harp and the harp being a big body instrument in one generation, she has managed to change a lot of her features to be able to handle such a huge instrument. Her fingers has changed, her arm length has changed, her face and her body structure has changed that um, a young lady can support such a heavy big instrument because she has to carry it as well, as well as reaching the far last string on it. So. With her own thought, with her own need to evolve, she has evolved her body to be able to play harp. Then I start looking, I thought this is very strange. Then I start looking at other harp players. And you see the ones who started from the young age playing harp, they all have more or less very common features. The will to survive, the will to achieve, the field in your psychological section of your brain to achieve a satisfaction of doing something has coded the physical part of the body to make changes that the arm goes further out, the fingers are longer. And it's done in one generation by one person. So, in looking at her, I adore her, what do you call it, playing um, harp. She was playing harp, but I was looking at how evolution has happened. And <clears throat> this, uh, this young lady taught me a lot in how the operation of the will and the uh, strength of the will has power over the physicality of the man. And that knowledge, in OK, was done in 2008, 2009, and the process of MS and ILS brought us to understand how the will of a man forces a man to die, or wishes the wish of a man to die becomes a reality that you end up with the ILS. Uh, Yo's daughter was, in a way, confirming the process she wished to be a harp player, 
to be able to such an instrument for such a young girl, the body had to give information to the brain, the physical part of the brain, to make adjustment because this is what I desire. And the body has followed it. Now, the same principle applies to MS and ILS and other diseases. The man wishes to die because of whatever reason. Physically, he doesn't put a gun to his head, but because he's created that information, the physical body goes into process of shutting down, which is death. Now you see how research is connected one to another. Yo's daughter was a very much com confirmation of part of the technology for me. And uh, I appreciate and I thank him for their friendship and the relationship we have with our families, with each other, because we just live about four or five kilometers from each other. So, you see, you, you understand um, how, if you're observant, a lot of people just look at the beautiful heart prayer. I looked what caused that change, and now the research has come to the MS and the ILS, we understand. Now you add the ILS, uh, what do you call it, the wishes of the death, with, with the conversion of the carbon in amino acid for MS, then you see the brain has created a certain gravitational magnetic field, which comes through, a, um, through the same process of the producing a gas into a GANS. So, uh, when your nerves is isolated, there is no disease we call MS, your nano structure of your amino acid is in a diamond structure. From diamond to become carbon, you have to orientate in a slightly different way, crystal structure, and that means releasing some, some magnetic gravitational field. So, to become carbon, to become a conductor, to lead to MS, your wish in your psychological part of your brain must have created the condition of withdrawal, reduction in energy. And when do you wish to reduce energy? When you want to die. Then you understand how reduction in the psychological part of the brain, or you're in pain, you can't handle it, the reasons are there. Then you see how you end up with MS. We haven't been successful in all of our MS trials, in all our tribes. We are very open about it. I always say to even to people around here, even in my business life, we are 95% we fail, but the 5% we succeed, we learn enough to add to it. So, you understand, you wish, your lack of confidence, your lack of uh, wanting to live, but the still connection to life, you create energy absorption or reduction in your brain. So, the brain, instead of producing diamond structure carbon in your amino acid, it produces graphite, or changes the mimon to graphite, and then you get MS. All you need to do two things, you go back to the physical part, you push the levels up, or psychologically you find out where the problem is, that the person can do the change and produce, give instruction internally to the physical side, that the carbons in this level have to be in the diamond structure level energy magnetic field, and not uh, graphite. So, when it's done that, then you talk, you walk, and everything else, because there is no leakage anymore of the information, the information which is energy going from your brain to the organ, then uh, your MS is out. We are learning more and more. If they take me to court to say the condition of the medical is, is crook or a fraud, I will put such a thing out that all the doctors will resign to be doctors and shows that are all crook signed up to nothing. Because... The, the science of the medical side is so solid, it's so solid by the true the creation of the plasma, that it shows all the medical research up to now, a lot of it is all granddad's fairy tale story. We support chemotherapy, because 
I explain scientifically what happens. It's the same thing as in your reactor. Chemotherapy for a cancer, I the material they give can destroy, can give enough energy that the cancer cell dies. But one of the problems, they are making it more targeted cancer. But at the end, when we cannot do at the moment, these chemicals, which are absorbed into the digestion system, into the blood, they release a huge amount of energy into the body system. It's like you eating like dates, if you understand, between the warm and cold food. Yeah, You release a huge amount of energy into the digestion system. These energies literally have to be given somewhere in your lymph, these energies are given to your cells. So what happens when you give an energy to a cell? What happens when you blow air into the balloon? It expands. So when the cell gets too much energy, it expands. It's not a normal size. It absorbs more energy. So as your lymph pass and part of your lymph goes through your bone structure to become part of your bone marrow to immune system, now you have a balloon blocking the holes in your bone which are supposed to come part of your lymph to become part of your immune system. So chemotherapy doesn't kill you. Chemotherapy doesn't reduce your immune system. Expansion of the cells in your um, limbs cause the blockage of the bone to absorb very, very low energy, but very strong limbs through the bone structure to your bone marrow. Where do you think your bone marrow comes from? Bone marrow is when your lymph passes through your bone structure. And then the body causes it to be absorbed through the blood circulation into your body. So, chemo increases the volume of the cell. The volume of cells are being one centimeter. And the hole which is made by our ancestors through our DNA is 1.1 centimeter, millimeter, let's say. Or let's say the lymph is one micron and this is 1.1 micron. So, the lymph used to go through this hole and become part of this. And we have a perfect immune system. Now, because of the energy which is delivered by chemotherapy, the, the size of the cell in the, in the lymph is 1.2 millimeter. It cannot go through the hole. Not only it cannot go through the hole, it blocks the hole too. So you receive less lymph to your bone structure to go become bone marrow, to become part of your immune system. And most of the people die because of cancer or chemotherapy because they don't produce immune system. Now we developed a technology where we can take the energy from the lymph and it becomes again back to one, what do you call it, one micro. So now it goes through health. We have a confirmed data by a doctor who's sick in Germany confirming the technology is correct and is monitored by two or three other doctors. We receive a blood test every week. The technology is 100% correct. That's why we support chemo. We are not paid by the chemo uh, lobby or pharmaceutical. We understand how beautiful this technology is, but it creates a small uh, problem. And we have found how to solve it. And the process is going in Germany. The ones which use the system and it doesn't give the result we are looking for, it doesn't mean the technology is wrong. It means we haven't understood the process of the conversion and the size. So you see a guy using the ILS system and he makes so much improvement. We make a system for ILS for another one. We don't see the same improvement. Because it means his amino acid combination with the minerals in his body is slightly different than the system. So we have to change the system, all fine. This is why we are asking for the second generation, 25 scientists to come and do things. Because now we understand the full structure, we put it into data that anybody around the world can produce it. It was the same, we were talking with Mr. Cho with the Chinese Cash Foundation in China yesterday on the Skype. He said, how you look to, if you don't license, how do you expect, uh, you know, to have an income? I said, we leave it to the people. If they benefit by it, and they only want to take it as theirs, there's no problem. But in time, people have to learn. He said, it's a new way of doing things. This is how the technology freely is becoming a knowledge to public.
We didn't come ask, can you pay us this? Can you pay us that? If you want this, we put the Fukushima on. We meet with the authorities. We meet with the uh, the, the technologies getting to Japan for uh, TEPCO to use. I tell you something very direct. These people who are trying to stop us, the Cash Foundation, for their own clandestine situations or whatever, you boys, you're going to need this technology for you and your family more than anybody else. When you cry to save your own lives, you stop the technology, you have to surrender to your meager life. Support us, we support the human race. Instead of going through all these, we know you're, what you're writing, we see what you're doing. We knew the picture before you put it on the net days before, weeks before, months before. People inside you telling us what's happening, not people from outside. People closest to you, which is your own soul, gives the information away before you physically open your mouth. This is what I thought to people here. In a space, you come across things which to you, you are used to physicality. The only way you know there is another being in your presence is when your magnetic gravitational field of your body interacts with the field which they carry at their existence, and then you know the presence. Die shall not steal and die shall not kill. When you plan and you work this way, we are aware of it. We are within you and amongst you. And the spy to you is your own soul. So stop this stupid process, understand what it is, and collaborate to help the others. As the knowledge seekers told you this morning, they've seen how easily, by principle, you can produce gold. One, one neutron. Any questions? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Cash? Yes? Hello? Uh, this is James. Uh, Professor Gao has joined us, so I just want to introduce you to him. Uh, he's the professor at the uh, uh, Beihang University in China, one of the top aerospace uh, aeronautic uh, university in China. So uh, please say hello to Mr. Uh, Professor Gao. Good morning, or oh, good afternoon to you, Professor. Yeah, I'm very glad to be here. Uh, I've heard of uh, Professor Kesher's name for a long time, so uh, I'm very glad here. Okay, do you hear me? Yes, thank you very much for your presence. Um, I would like to extend our hand to you and your university and the Chinese aerospace to join us to develop this space technology. Maybe you can yeah. carry this uh, hand of friendship from the foundation to your government that uh, through your connections, we open our doors, you can bring your scientists into us or we come to you to collaborate to do this technology together. Yes, I think the collaboration between us would be benefit and uh, give us a mutual benefit and uh, uh, benefit how all human beings. Uh, I think if you speak to Mr. Cho, I've uh, been to China, I met with your um, officials and leading group about six years ago. Uh, I'm prepared to come back and collaborate with you, or if you like to join us here in Italy, for us as two, two groups to be able to develop this space technology for all aspects with your government and with your university. Yeah, I would uh, do my better to uh, make this things possible. The cooperation, uh, I will report uh, to my leaders. Um, Mr. Cho knows that one of our members of the Knowledge Seekers panels 
is coming to Japan. She will she'll be there by the end of this month. Um, she will be carrying some of the materials which we have made for Fukushima for testing with, is it three different groups? Two different groups, Two different groups in Tokyo in, by the end of this month. So it will be nice if you want to access or we can send you through James connection in, in Tokyo some of the material. Otherwise, I invite you to join us here with your students or we can do direct teaching together without moving. Because uh, to me, I have a lot of respect for Chinese and Chinese system and Chinese government. Uh, the respect has come out of collaboration and understanding over years. So I see China and Russia as an as a easy way for development of the spaceship technology program. And it will be nice if you could organize for us to collaborate. Yeah, that would be fine. Thank you very much. Is there any That's question good. you want to ask us? Uh, no, right now I have no problem. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Professor. We speak later on, James, uh, to sort things out. Yes, now I'll do that. I will contact you again. We'll yes, hello. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, James. I will. Yes. Thanks. Thank you very much. James, okay. I send you the. Uh, can you hear me? I send you the Taiwanese group that you can access okay. to them and get their patents to be released worldwide uh, immediately. Uh, okay, please do that. Yeah, no contact yeah, we'll talk later on. I'll call you back later on. No problem. Thanks. Thank you very much for yesterday. It was wonderful. Yes, you're welcome. Okay, very good. Thanks. Thank you very much. Is there any other questions? Yeah, I have a question for you, Dr. Kesh. Can you hear me? Listening. I'm listening, yes. Okay. Uh, you've coated a lot of different materials with the nano coating. Have you tried coating crystals? No, no, no. We are, I'm hoping that uh, our um, team member in the panel, we call him, he is um, Archimedes. He understands the materials, and he's he's working with uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, with clay, with um, what do you call it? Ceramics. So the um, uh, look the next step with him, I think it will be crystals. Okay. Also. To met, to you, do point. you have any experience? Do you have any experience with crystals? Uh, a little bit. I'm a chemist, but In I also create way? just chemistry from college. But I have uh, I create these organ devices. They're pyramids, and they emit an energy, and I can transition the energy so you can photograph it. But I wanted to know. People also call it chi or prana, and how it relates to the energy fields that you know about? Pyramids, if you make it with a crystal or any pyramid has, if you put two pyramids together back to back, you get very much near a structure of um, diamond structure, crystal. If you do it the right way, if you understand the positioning of it, so, um, uh, pyramids have an energy uh, release or absorption. If you understood the structure of the material when it converts from the gas to a gas. I, I understand it depends, that. It depends how you make your crystal. Your, your pyramid can become a gas or can become a matter. Then it releases or absorbs energy from its environment, 
And that energy, due to the structure, the shape of the structure of the crystal lattice of your your pyramid, this is what a lot of people don't understand, and they say pyramid does this and that. Pyramid has its other half in the ground. Or as you put it on the table, the pyramid itself, you see the physical half in one part, but the other magnetic gravitational field of the structure sits below it. And at the same time, because of its structure, absorbs or releases, depending on how it's done and how it's been made, or what is made of, certain energies according to its structure. So you convert, you absorb, or they say uh, pyramid has a special effect. Pyramid has a crystal lattice structure, which you physically see half of it. Okay, uh, I've made the devices and you can see the energy in some of them going in and coming out and I, I made them, I structured them so you can photograph the energy and you can actually see all the different colors coming out of the energy. It's uh, beautiful. Yes, because I, it is a pyramid, is a crystal lattice structure, it's the same as because it's a usually, what you say, mono or maybe multi, depends what you do it. Uh, depends where the focal point of the transfer is. Some people put apple or fruit on the pyramid and say, say it's a long time very good. Or people put things on the pyramid. You absorb or extract the energy according to the shape and what you put under it. Because it's a, as we, I always say pyramid is like an iceberg. We only see part of it and the other half is eaten under the water. And this is what people don't understand. Okay. Also, the uh, how do you calculate the gravitational field point for a destination in space uh, from far distance, like another galaxy? How would you? It's a field fingerprint. Reactor? It's a fingerprint. Well, I'll teach that later on. Okay. It's what they call it's a it's a zero grav it's a zero communication system we talked about before. Your every galaxy has its own zero communication line. You have to, it's very easy to enter with. It's like the light which comes from the, from the star. You see it, you can, you can link into it. And then you measure its field at a point, because it's filled with you, and at the point of the uh, release is more or less the same. And each magnetic field of each uh, star it's like a man's fingerprint, not two are the same. Okay, so I understand. You, this, the, the, the transportation is not by any other thing, but that literally is if you have a magnet and you put a magnet next to a wood, it won't touch the wood. But if you have another magnet, it pulls it to itself. So with this technology, you can create the magnetic field as always of a wood or of glass or whatever you like. Because now we have the knowledge to vary gravity and the magnetic field together when you do. This has been one of the part of the problem of the communications, satellites and communication and transportation, is we always look at the magnetic field. But if you look at the magnetic and gravitational field, then it's a specific fingerprint and then you lock into it. That's how matters attract each other. Because the gravitational and magnetic field matches, not just the magnetic field. And when it matches, it's instantaneous. You become part of your, you're in the ocean of the same field. Okay. And then I'll, if you go closer, I'll, pardon? Go ahead. And then if you go closer to the inner part of it, you go with the, the speed of the transition or the speed of the plasma of the seed of the, uh, what do you call it, the principal matter. And when, there is something very important to understand, when you travel within the, what I call, a uh, field of the magnetic field, gravitational field of a destination point, you will find out you're totally protected in your speed of travel. So, okay, also, your I had a I had a near death experience a few years ago, and I got to cross over to the other side, like people say. And ever since then, I have a certain ESP abilities, and um, I can access that point in my head 
with the gravitational field from the emotional mind, but and um, I can change, I can uh, increase the energy field strength through my body, but I don't really know how to control it to do anything with it. You got to teach yourself. <laughs> um, it, one of the ways to do. One of the ways to do, if you got a crystal and you say you work with the crystals and the pyramid, um, this is what I was teaching yesterday. Um, your body creates gravitational magnetic field of strength. I put a small magnet on the table and I said to, to the knowledge seekers, sit here and concentrate your fields till you get the, till you can move the, the magnet. And if you can manage to go low enough, you interact, it's the same way. So you do the same thing. If you've got a crystal which you can see the field or measure it and see the color of it, then sit in front of it and measure what colors you change. You won't feel change everything, but consider the environmental, and then you see how much you can control the fields from your brain into the crystal. And then you understand how the future reactors will be done will be controlled. That's cool. Because Mecca, this is, yeah, do it and send the, put a post up, the post up, put the pictures on the Cash Foundation, YouTube or give it to uh, Rick to do it or we post it around. Yeah, you will I, uh, see I it's shared a, yeah. pictures already. Yeah, the, but sit in people. front of it. And, yeah, sit in front of it and make sure there is nobody else to interfere with and see how the magnetic gravitational field of your your brain, what you call thoughts, because it's the same, <clears throat> in interacting with the crystal will change. And think the same thing twice and see you get the same color, the same combination. And we can learn from you. It's a beautiful way. I would love to see how, you, how the experiment turns up because this will show us a way into the future how to assess uh, controls okay also when i do this uh there is a physical response in my body uh it creates what people call goosebumps or the chills and depending on the strength of the field i create it depends on uh how it shows the thickness or what you can see the amount on on the places of different parts of you're my body. another you're another first one i heard you can do this i know one or two other people so uh, I know exactly what I'm telling you. If you do that, you will see it. My wife used to be busy with these things years and years ago. And oh, yeah, um, Dirk, yeah, Dirk Lorenz, uh, he 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 has these pyramids and he does. So I've seen close and how they do what they do and what can be done. But if you have a <coughs> crystal structure. Uh, you can see and observe the change of the color that will teach us a lot. I like to be your student. Okay, I will post the pictures and I will make some videos because I can I can show people how to build the pyramid. Ask, so they can see the energy. Uh, please, please ask Rick private. He'll give you my private email and send these things to me through my private email. Okay. Because I, and then I'll talk to you. Maybe we put a we put a learning sessions with you that you can teach us. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Next question. Any other question? Okay. So so. So summing it up today, we've seen the structure of the space reactor, the space, uh, what do you call it, craft. We, we need support uh, that the um, people who help us, they can have the financial support to build it. My message again goes to the, to the governments, do not plan to assassinate me. We know what you're up to. Do not plan to shut the foundation forum, block it in Europe, in Canada, or in America. Uh, stopping the knowledge will come more and more. Every time in past 10, 20 years you stopped me, we came back stronger and stronger. <coughs> now the knowledge is in the hand of people. I asked again, Chub, 
Please, I'll send you the link. I asked the Taiwanese listeners who are working, please, you have my authority and my authorization to release the patents if you tell us the government has released it to you. If one nation knows it, the whole world has to know. One of the reasons I explained we released the technology in a USB stick to all the governments last two years was because when we gave these patents to European patent, it was only becoming the knowledge for Europeans to take advantage scientifically over the others and sharing it with the Canadians and Americans. The reason we went out and we gave all the patents to every nation was that everybody will be in the same shoe. So now the Brazilians have it, the African nations have it, the Chinese have it, the Russians have it. So there is no abuse of knowledge and technology. So now that one government has decided if they tell us correct, it is in their hand, released to them by their government, and they say they've seen a patent number five, release it. Then the whole world can work the same as you and we work together. And if you don't receive the release, I authorize the people who in the background holding our patents for security reasons, they release it if anything happens to me, to release it within coming time. So we gave the governments a year and a half headline, what do you call it, head time. Now everybody else has it. So it's better to come from them than coming from the foundation. We are not here to fight the system, we are here to collaborate with the system. And what I ask the foundation needs, if they close the account of the foundation in Holland, organize an account that you can support the building of the spaceship craft. I, we gave the option to Boeing long time ago. I gave you the name, Mr. Benhoff, Dallas Benhoff. He's a senior key man in connection between NASA and Boeing for production of the crafts. I've asked him to join us to or bring the Boeing in because the knowledge sitting with Boeing, with the European, uh, what do you call it, uh, aircraft industry, we can produce these crafts literally a matter of months. Uh, then we all share the same knowledge. There's no competition between one to another. The market is so big that collaboration will bring more fruits. Now you're building aircrafts, our people in Boeing, in uh, Airbus, in Lockheed Martin, in China, to take people, a few people, from Moscow to Washington, from London to Tenerife. Collaborate with us when you make crafts with much more people, much more passenger, more wealth for you, for excursion to the moon, excursion to the Mars and the other planet. This technology is not a threat to no pharmaceutical, to no aircraft, to no military. This is an addition to the man's knowledge. If you don't understand it, you're too short-sighted. So maybe we produce one craft for you lot to be the first passengers. As I've said before, you're fighting for a corner of a land. We give you a galaxy to rule, but your lifetime is very short. Any other question? There was a, a question from Ad. Um... Uh, Foth on our Skype. Um, it says, Rick, can you ask then in creating the first carbon SP2 nano layer, the process of the caustic liquid uh, produces EUV, let's say like in the lungs? It depends what you put in there. In the system we are using, we sometimes add caustic plus potassium. In the Coca Cola bottle, is a slightly different because of the shape and the uh, carbon which is released by the CH bond in the plastic. In that, you don't need uh, <coughs> what do you call it um, the EUV as such. You this you may, it, the the process is very simple. Your electrodes in the Coca Cola bottle behave like gravitational field attraction points. So. In that process, the gravitational field attraction of the copper in the layers 
if you do it the right way, matches the carbon in the neck of the uh, uh, Coca-Cola bottle and he extracts it because the two fields match. That's why sometimes you use a Coca-Cola bottle and you see no no loss of the head and in some cases you can because in the layer which you produce, because as you produce nano layers, each layer on top of another layer is exactly like the gas layers in your reactor. As you put more hydrogen, you create another layer of plasma of a hydrogen, but it's not the same as the first one. So it stays as a different layer. And these layers create different gravitational magnetic field. And if your gravitational magnetic field in one or four, two of the layers, nano layers you produce matches the gravitational magnetic field of the carbon, which is in the neck of the thread neck of the cup, Coca-Cola bottle will pull it out. That's how you do the disassociation. Not with caustic, but with the gravitational magnetic field which is created on the layers of electrode. You look at the wrong way. If um, the, the, the reason we use Coca-Cola bottle and it doesn't happen with others is very much like a steel. You can make a steel, but if you roll it in different way and mix it in different materials, you get a stainless steel. It's the same thing. It's the, it's the way the, the compression is created on a Coca-Cola bottle on the thread end allows to the crystal structure of the carbon is very much matching to one of the layers in the um, copper electrodes, nano layers. So you get the absorption. That's why if you read the report of the IMAC, it says they see clusters. Where you see the clusters, somewhere in, that, in the layer of your nanomaterials on the copper electrode, the gravitational magnetic field of the carbon matching to the neck of the um, Coca-Cola bottle is created, and they're all attracted to one position. The same as we said, create the gravitational magnetic field of the destination planet, you get absorbed to it. This is a good example of it in a micro and a macro level. There is no magic. You've got to understand the carbon just doesn't jump from one to another. Your layers, because of the layering, when you can see a nano layer, when you see a dark matter on your electrode, is thousands and thousands and thousands of layers that you can physically see it. One nano layer cannot be seen by a naked eye. So when you create thousands and thousands of layers, magnetic fields on top of each other, you literally do one thing, get a stick, put 20, 30, 40 uh, ring magnets in it. And then when you push one, you see the whole move to, to, to create a position accommodation. Or if you push it together in a very tight pack, you see they absorb different matters to themselves. You can do this with, uh, with, uh, with the ring magnets. I've done it. So you create a cluster of carbon on your electrode, as is in the report of the IMAC, not by nuclear material, not by radiation. It's literally your layers create gravitational magnetic fields of the crystal structure of the carbon in the neck, which is very much in resin, very much near to each other. So it pulls out the carbon out onto it, releases atomic hydrogen, and you see your thread is disappearing. So part of the, it's literally like you put a dust of iron on a table and bring a magnet. When you get to a certain field near enough, the, the dust, a part of it, come absorb. Now you create that magnetic gravitation for the carbon on your nano layers as they compress between each other because there are different layers and they produce it. That's how you extract it. If you create another layer, which you have to use aluminium, you'll find that you'll have clusters of hydrogen, atomic hydrogen on your electrodes. Test it. You understand, understand the process. Don't look at the physicality. Any other question? Hello. Are That's we finished? quiet out there. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we should let you go at this point. Um, yes. Delivered a lot of information that time around as well. Yeah, we will start releasing now. 
Um, there is eight of them. The thing is, if I don't tell you the correct way, and this, uh, the team of knowledge seekers put knowledge outside and it's half cooked, it can be dangerous. As an old Indian says, they says Nim Hakim Khatarajad, which means the, it's an old Indian proverb, which means half doctor is dangerous to life because he knows half of the knowledge. That's why we teach the knowledge fully and try to explain to understand. While you were having the workshop, we received certain information which we brought and on what we were going to part of or partially what we were going to do next week to this week. First of all, we ask the Taiwanese to release the, the patterns they are in position because it's the rest of the world can have it. It's come from people to people. If I do it, they say he's done to oppose the government. But if the government has released it to his nationals, the nationals now are equal around the world. They can release it to the other people. Second thing was the the confirmation of stop planning to kill me. That will, it will, you, you might get me to a court, you might get me to get to prison, but you cannot touch the prophet of God. No way under no circumstances. Curse be on your family and your blood if you think that way. And the curse of God goes for 2,000 years on the tribe of Moses. It will not be short. The message is very, very clear. So we plan, we go for the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, for the development of the spacecraft, we, in my emails, in my workshop, and on the forum, we have asked from scientists from India, from Iran, from Israel, from Palestinians, from Chinese. We got to work together. This technology, this knowledge is the knowledge of God and belongs to the whole of humanity. Not a few to have a double Rolls Royce parked outside their houses and called Mr. Boss or President. The technology is released, is fully released. Now I sincerely and deeply thank the government of Taiwan for taking the step which we were going to take. And as you say, God's will will be done in different ways. Now, it's not us, a bunch of scientists in Taiwan have the USB stick. They say they have it, they send me some questions, they send me some pictures, and this matches to the information which is the USB key we give to the government, hidden patents. So, you are correct. I ask you, ask Mr. Cho the same. Please get in touch with the Taiwanese and ask them to release all, all the patents. You have my authorization. So next time when we talk, we talk about the guns of the matter and the medical applications in the next two or three sessions. Uh, just uh, be, uh, just to understand the position where we are and how we are trying to do it. We need the financial support to be independent of any organization to build this craft for the world population. Because once we build the first, we give it freely to all the nations. Boeing will have a copy, European Space Agency will have a copy, Airbus will have a copy. Then they make their own flavors. There are seven billion of us. Not one organization can do it. The same, I opened the door with the pharmaceuticals. Come to us, we give you how you can do to make chemotherapy safe. You have a beautiful product on your hand. It's got a small fault. Even if you do radiation target therapy, that you deliver nuclear material to the cell, that cell, once absorbs the nuclear radiation, has to do something and it creates other side effects. We have the technology freely is in your hand, and the doctors in Germany are already monitoring it. We have seen the process. So I thank you for your time, and hopefully if I'm not arrested or killed by next session, we'll be here next uh, Thursday. Thank you very much, Mr. Kesh. Thank you very much indeed. All the best. Thank you, Mr. Cash. Thank you. Thank you Thanks, very much. Mr. Cho. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Mr. Bye. Cash. Okay. Good morning. good morning to you. Bye. Bye.